Hi, welcome to this particular class and here today we will be talking about very interesting application uh, of micro technology in drug screening. So, what I mean by drug screening? You see when we uh, uh, let, let us take example of cancer, so that it is easier for us to understand. When a cancer is diagnosed, the patient has to go through chemotherapy right, we know uh, in general patient are given chemotherapy. Now, if there are 5 or 3 FDA approved drugs, 3 approved drugs that can be administered to a patient, which drug to pick from? Do we have any technology or can we propose a technology? So, my question is that for a patient X out of 3 drugs let us say A, B, C drug A would be effective or B would be effective or C would be effective. Same thing if there is a next patient, patient Y out of 3 drugs A, B, C which one would be effective. So, the question here arises is that we need or do we have do we have a patient centric platform that you take the sample of the cells or from the tumor of the patient load that sample into the device test these 3 drugs and tell which drug would be effective for that particular patient. Then the, the recovery of the patient would be better rather than just giving uh, from A, B, C any drug to the patient, right. So, we will be discussing today a technology which I have named as microchip for rapid drug screening. How we can design a microchip? for this particular application and can this microchip be used as a patient centric platform in case of chemotherapy. Now, uh, it is not just limited to chemotherapy, it can be used for other therapies as well where the drugs are involved. Right. So, um, I, will, I will show you the device uh, and, and we will see how we can design it, we will see what kind of results we can get and uh, we need to make sure that the, the results that we are getting uh, it, it, it matches the gold standard, uh, the results obtained from gold standard. So, we will, we will performing uh, uh, the, the, so we will be use, we will be looking at the experiments that we can perform uh, to understand the efficacy of drug or to evaluate the efficacy of drug all right so uh, let us see let us see if you see the screen uh, what we are talking about we will be talking about a microchip for rapid drug screening now let's take this scenario what happens a patient when goes to hospital for consulting a clinician depending on the results obtained from the gold standard like 
MRI mammography. So, let us take an example of breast cancer. Okay. So, in breast cancer the patient has to go for MRI or mammography and if the region is suspicious then the patient would be asked to go for biopsy. Biopsy. Biopsy is nothing but taking the tissue out from that particular region so that we can see or we can perform further test to make sure that the patient is suffering from a cancer or uh, it, it is not cancer. All right. So, when the biopsy is performed the tissue is out and tissue is sent to the path lab test tissue is sent to path lab test all right. Now, if a patient is diagnosed with cancer if a patient is diagnosed with cancer then like we have taken example out of three drugs A, B or C or N C any one drug is given to the patient one of this drug A, B or C is given to the patient and then patient has to wait for about 3 to 4 months to understand whether the drug is effective or not, whether the tumor is dying or not, whether cancer is getting killed or not and to wait for that amount of time is a wastage. So, what can be alternative technique? Alternative technique can be that you take the uh, tumor or the tissue a slice of the tissue that is obtained using biopsy and you, you get the organoid and you use this organoid on a chip and flow different drugs and can you uh, flow different drugs means flow either drug A or B or C and get the results and tell the patient ok based on our experiment drug A, B and C that we have used a particular drug is more effective for your case and that will be a better approach. So, how can we design this chip right? Of course, you can go for trypsinization, single cells and perform lot of other experiments related to biology. Our idea is not to understand in detail biology, but to understand how we can create or how we can fabricate a device that can tell a patient which drug will be better for his or her particular case. That means, a device which is patient centric. Now, if we create an interdigitated electrodes, if we create interdigitated electrodes right like this and we place the tissue or spheroid on this interdigitated electrodes then what we will get we will get a impedance value right we will get a impedance value. Now, if I load a drug let us say drug A or drug B or drug C then if the drug is effective there will be the, the, the tissue or the organoid right the tumor will start dying and when it starts dying the conductivity would increase conductivity would increase and impedance would decrease this is one way of doing it this is one way of testing drugs A, B or C. Now, the difficulty with this is that the drug is in continuous contact with the tumor this is a static platform let us say if I say drug with dotted points like this right the drug is shown by this kind of dotted points in this particular device what we see is the drug is in continuous contact with the spheroids, but our body is not static this is <laughs> sorry this is a static platform our body is not static our body is dynamic. Thus a static platform to understand the efficacy of drug to understand the performance of drug is not a solution. So, what is a solution the solution is to fabricate or to design and fabricate 
a microfluidic platform because in microfluidic platform we can we can mimic the in vivo situation and that will be a dynamic platform similar to our body right but the concept we got is that if we load the drug on the interdigitated electrodes with tumor then we can see uh, the change in impedance that means if we can use impedance as a, a, a modality or electrical property uh, to understand whether drug is effective or not so electrical property of tissue which is our impedance can be used to understand which drug is effective like i said if a drug is effective the tissue will die the tumor will die the cells will die and thus there is a increase in conductivity and decrease in impedance thus impedance can be used as a marker to understand which drug is effective or not but the problem here was that we are using a static platform so now let us see how can we create a dynamic platform and how a dynamic platform will look like right so i have a chip right in my hand and i'll show it to you and this chip we are looking at uh, uh, we will be looking at uh, how to how to design this chip today uh, i am holding this chip in my hand this is the microfluidic chip it's just a microfluidic chip uh, uh, and it has a microheater it has uh, an interdigital electrodes and it has a channel made out of pdms so we will be looking at how we can create this chip that can be used to understand or can be used to uh, rapidly uh, screen different drugs and as you can see there are a lot of lot of contacts here this contacts are for the uh, uh, electrodes and if you see the another two contacts at the bottom right you can see another two contacts at the bottom then this contacts here right here this one these are for heater this contacts are for this contacts are for the electrodes right this one and two this contact are for heaters now you can see further that there are lot of holes right uh, there is a long channel here you can see very long channel here one two three four five six seven eight and there are shorter channels next to long channels uh, right you can see here there is a shorter channel here to here one next one here to here then here to here so there are long channels and there are short channels on the back side so in the front side only there is a heater as you cannot see through the pdms i am showing it to you from the back side uh, here is a heater you can very clearly see there is a heater and there there are interdigitated electrodes so how can we fabricate such a sensor how can we fabricate such a microfluidic chip right for rapid drug screening all right so let's see uh, the screen if we see the screen what we have we have at the bottom at the first step is your microheater or a heater why we require heater so that we can achieve 37 degree centigrade for the cells to be alive right so we can keep cells alive if we can have 37 degree centigrade temperature now which is similar temperature to the incubator similar temperature to the incubator over this over this micro heater there is a insulator insulator on this insulator there are interdigitated electrodes if i zoom in then i can see here each electrode has a shape which is shown here right so what is the first step first step is my heater second step is the insulator third step is the uh, fabrication of interdigitated electrodes next step would be to fabricate or to to uh, fabricate a chip with different channels right and these channels we can create in pdms okay so we'll be learning how to fabricate this particular microfluidic chip and if you see the chip if you see the chip what you see here is see there is a drug inlet there is see i'll i'll just draw it here 
uh, this one is your longer channel longer channel right this one is your shorter channel small channel shorter channel right so just consider one hmm? then there are similarly there are eight one two eight all right so what we are discussing here we are discussing only one channel which is a longer channel and a shorter channel so longer channel we have to load the drug from here we have to take out the drug from here we will load the drug from one end we will take out the drug from another end this is what it is written here drug inlets and drug outlets okay now if you consider the shorter channel we load the cancer cell we load here in the shorter channel we load cancer cells you can also load spheroids you can also load organoids right like a tumor cancer cells with matrigel matrigel what is matrigel any cancer when we see a cancer is always surrounded always surrounded by ecm extra cellular matrix extra cellular matrix any cancer is surrounded by extra cellular matrix this extra cellular matrix we can replicate by using matrigel by using matrigel thus cancer cells are mixed with matrigel you can see here right and can be loaded into the shorter channel so cancer cells with matrigel right are loaded into the shorter channel here hmm. now if i enlarge this particular channel then it is like this okay and below this channel there is this interdigitated electrodes which one the one which is here right below this channel there is interdigitated electrodes below interdigitated electrodes there is a insulator and below insulator there is a heater you got it so first layer is your heater second layer is your insulator third layer is your interdigitated electrodes and fourth layer would be your channels made out of pdms made out of pdms so let us now see how we can fabricate the device and we will discuss in detail how this device can be used for rapid drug screening right the electrodes for sure this these are used for impedance measurement which is given here the heater uh, contact pairs that we have just seen uh, i have shown you the device and the contact pairs are used to apply uh, power so that the heater can achieve 37 degrees centigrade temperature right so let us see one by one first step is we have to fabricate a micro heater right so how can we fabricate a micro heater now everything is on glass right so we take a glass we take a glass and we deposit a metal for micro heater let's say my metal is nichrome nichrome right so i have deposited a metal which is nichrome for my heater what's the next step my next step would be next step would be i will i will spin coat photo resist right you see i have spin coated photo resist which one positive photo resist right this is first step you can always say that i take a glass the glass substrate i can consider this as first step to take a glass substrate right and make it ready by cleaning it for the fabrication second step can be depositing nichrome for heater third step can be 
positive photoresist spin coating positive photoresist on the uh, metal coated glass. Next step, next step after positive photoresist, this is photoresist, this is my nichrome and this is my glass right. Next step which is my fourth step, fourth step would be to load the mask right. I have to load the mask so that I can perform photolithography correct. So, I am loading a bright field mask what kind of mask I am loading bright field mask. Now, what kind of uh, photoresist I have positive photoresist positive photoresist. So, if I expose this mask is expose this whole glass wafer right along with mask and positive photoresist with UV what will happen the area the area which is not exposed. So, which one this this one which is bold mm -hmm, like this. So, the area which are not exposed will be stronger and the area which are exposed would be weaker. So, fourth step would be to load the mask and perform UV exposure. Fifth step would be to develop the glass develop develop the photoresist develop the photoresist and when we want to develop the photoresist what we get we have nichro right and we have photoresist. So, I will get this kind of pattern correct. What is next step? Next step would be to etch no are we missing something you see after uh, positive photoresist what is an what is the step P soft bake right soft bake then UV exposure after UV exposure photoresist developer when you perform photoresist developer then photoresist will get developed this is your photoresist this is your nichrome this is your glass right after this would be hard bake hard bake hard bake is done at 120 degree centigrade for 1 minute right. When you perform hard bake then next step would be to etch nichrome right. So, when we etch nichrome the area which is protected by photoresist will not get etched and the area which is not protected by photoresist will get etched. So, what we will have? We will have a glass wafer with micro heater, nichrome, glass correct. So, I have now designed a process flow for fabricating a micro heater first step done excellent. What is the next step? Next step is to next step is to form interdigitated electrodes, but before forming interdigital electrodes I have to cover my nichrome with an insulator because we cannot have metal over metal it will be shorted right. So, before I go for interdigital electrodes what I have I have a glass wafer with micro heater with micro heater right this is what I have. My next step would be I will I will grow I will grow silicon dioxide on to this micro heater correct and I will perform photolithography to remove the silicon dioxide from the contact pads. You see you do not want you do not want uh, silicon dioxide on the contact pads right. You do not need it because otherwise if there is silicon dioxide on contact pad you cannot apply any voltage it is an insulator. So, you have to perform photolithography such that the silicon dioxide from the contact pad is removed is etched ok. 
So, now I, I am hoping that you know how to perform photolithography. So, I am just skipping that step. What I am doing is I have taken a glass with micro heater. On that micro heater, we have grown silicon dioxide, and then you perform photolithography such that the silicon dioxide from the contact area of the micro heater is etched. Here, the silicon dioxide should be etched. Hmm. So, if I now see a wafer, right, if I now see the wafer, how it will look like? You see, it will look like this. Assume that this is a thick. Uh, everywhere there is a silicon dioxide, right? Everywhere there is silicon dioxide, except, except right? Except this area, or in another way. If I want to draw, I will just draw like this, so you can understand, right. Assume that everywhere it is silicon dioxide, everywhere silicon dioxide is there, all right. Everywhere silicon dioxide is there, except contact pads, hmm? except contact pads like this. Right? Everywhere there is silicon dioxide. Like this. Silicon dioxide. So, heater is covered with silicon dioxide heater is covered with silicon dioxide right about 1 micron silicon dioxide we can grow using pe cvd plasma and hence chemical vapor deposition right so what you can see only heater the silicon dioxide from heater contacts contact pads of the heater is out hmm. so once you do this once you once you deposit or you grow silicon dioxide and you perform photolithography such that the silicon dioxide is etched from the contact pad the next step would be to next step would be to fabricate interdigitated electrodes so let us see how we can fabricate interdigitated electrodes so once i have this assuming that i have taken out the silicon dioxide i have etched silicon dioxide from the contact pads my next step would be to deposit to deposit metal for interdigitated electrodes. So, let us say I have chrome gold as an interdigitated electrodes, right. How can I deposit this metal? You can deposit either by E beam or sputtering, hmm? E beam or sputtering. What is the next step? My next step would be to start photolithography process, right to start photolithography process. So, what is photolithography process? I have I have chrome gold right, I have a insulating layer and I have a micro heater. Correct? On this I will deposit or another deposit I will spin coat photoresist, photoresist chrome gold silicon dioxide nichrome glass right. On this what is the next step? After this we have to pre bake, pre bake at 90 degree centigrade. Next step would be to load load the mask correct. So, I am loading the mask hmm? I am loading a bright field mask right I am loading a bright field mask for creating interdigitated electrodes.
this is my bright field mask okay now next step would be next step would be uv exposure next step would be pr developer right so after i perform uv exposure and pr developer what will i have i will have chrome gold silicon dioxide glass nichrome and photoresist developed now the area which was which were exposed the areas which were exposed with uv were weaker the areas which were not exposed got stronger because we use positive photoresist we use positive photoresist right positive photoresist hmm? now what's the next step next step would be h chrome gold when you etch chrome and gold you know how to etch chrome and gold first you have to edge gold and then chrome because chrome is at the bottom gold is at the top when you edge chrome gold the area which is protected by the photoresist will be uh, saved it will not get etched and the areas which are not protected by photoresist will get etched so what you will have you will have a wafer a glass substrate right a glass substrate with interdigital electrodes at the top SiO2 next to it at the bottom there is a heater and the substrate is your glass you got it this is what you got now what you have a heater at the bottom insulator in between your electrodes and the heater good what is the next step next step is we have to we have to create channels right we have to create channels this is super easy super easy okay there are two ways i'll show you one way today and then sometime in the next uh, uh, modules i'll show you the another way of creating these channels right today we will be learning uh, the creation of these channels by using a mold that is fabricated uh, using su8 Okay. And then next time we will see how we can create a mold to create this channel using DRI that is by etching silicon itself. So, let us see how we can fabricate uh, uh, this particular channels and how we can use the mold. So, for that you have to take silicon, silicon oxidized silicon right that is oxidized silicon. SiO2, SiO2. Hmm. On this, you spin coat SU8. What do you do? You spin coat SU8. All right. SU8 is which kind of photoresist? SU8 is negative. It shows property similar to negative photoresist. Okay. Now what we want to do? we had to create this channel right after you uh, spin coat su8 after you spin coat su8 you have to pre bake it now for su8 the pre bake temperature is somewhere around 65 degrees centigrade and depending on the thickness of su8 the time also varies 
right. For, for positive photo resist and negative photo resist what we are discussing? We were discussing till now that the soft bake temperature or pre bake temperature is 90 degree centigrade and if you use hot plate then you can uh, heat it for uh, or bake it for 1 minute. The post bake temperature was 120 degree centigrade again if you are using hot plate you can bake it for 1 minute. This is for positive and negative photo resist right, but for SU8 65 degree is your soft bake. The time depends time depends on thickness of SU8 all right that is the first step that you have to understand. Second step is second most important point in uh, while using SU8 is that in our photolithography process in our photolithography process standard photolithography the steps are like this spin coat photoregist. Next step would be soft bake 91 minute next step would be mask aligning mask align and UV exposure right. Next step would be PR developer, next step would be hard bake 120 degree centigrade again 1 minute on hot plate. This is our standard lithography process right, but when you want to use this for positive and negative photoregist when you want to use SU8, SU8 first step is PR. So, SU8 spin coat, SU8 uh, is similar to negative or this, but anyway SU8 spin coat next step would be soft bake temperature is different, time is different. I told you time depends on the thickness time depends on thickness. Next step would be mask aligning, mask align and UV exposure. Next step is hard bake 95 degree centigrade for some time depends on thickness then comes PR developing. Where is the difference? Where is the difference that in SU8 after soft bake and mask aligning there is a hard bake before we go for photoregist developer. While in normal standard photolithography once you have soft bake mask aligner there is a PR developer and then there is a hard bake. You see here after mask aligner there is a hard bake and then there is a PR. right this is the only difference this is the only difference. The advantage of using SU8 is that SU8 is obtained uh, or we can get SU8 of different viscosity and thus the thickness of the channel can be different. The SU8 is easy first of all because just a uh, photo resist that we have to uh, pattern second is that the thickness can be varied depending on the type of SU8 that we are using. There are several types of SU8, SU8 25, SU8 50 uh, and, and lot of other SU8 depending on the thickness that we want all right. So, here what we have done? We have taken oxidized silicon wafer, we have spin coated SU8, next step would be next step would be pre bake right. If I go here next step is my soft bake, let us write soft bake, soft bake. Next step would be exposure right. So, I will just draw wafer silicon dioxide. So, it is a oxidized silicon wafer right on which there is a SU8 
on which there should be the mask right there should be mask. Now, you have to be careful because S u 8 e x is a negative photo resist ok x is negative photo resist. So, what you want now you want to create a hills. So, the area which is exposed will be stronger and the area which is not exposed will get weaker. The area which is not exposed because that is a property of a negative photo resist correct. So, what we can do we can use bright field mask, we can alternative use dark field mask such that we can have a pattern a pattern that looks like the one I am drawing here. Okay. and somewhere on the back side there are another pattern. So, this is a cross sectional view. So, you should understand this is S u 8 S i o 2 silicon S i o 2 here. So, to obtain this one we have to use mask which is shown here. After mask what is the next step? Next step would be exposure. UV exposure. When you perform UV exposure, next step would be hard bake, not developer. Okay, hard bake. After hard bake, which is an anti-five degree centigrade for particular time, depending on the thickness of SU8. Next step would be, next step would be sorry, this is uh, entire mask is like this entire mask is like this. Right? Hmm. Hmm. So, next step would be hard bake and then we have to develop photo resist. When you develop photo resist you will obtain this particular mold. Now, what you will do with this mold? What you will do with this mold, right? So, with this mold, right S u 8 mold what we will do we will pour we will pour P D M S and cure it pour P D M S and cure it. When you pour P D M S and cure it at 115 degree centigrade for 15 minutes then you can peel this P D M S off if you peel the PDMS what you will get is let me just redraw it. This channels right because there was SU8 this is PDMS when you when you pour the PDMS and cure it and when you peel it off you will have PDMS as shown in schematic this one ok. Now, what you have 
you have you have a glass wafer with heater right and interdigitated electrodes right and you have pdms so this is one and this is two correct these two things you have so let me just rub this down now we know that how we can create pdms right so what we have we have wafer one with interdigital electrodes sio2 this is chrome gold interdigitated electrodes which are this one right then we have silicon dioxide then we have micro heater which is this one right and we have pdms correct this is my second wave hmm? one two right now what i will do is i will perform oxygen plasma oxygen plasma technique and after performing oxygen plasma technique i will stick pdms to the glass so after performing oxygen plasma technique this is done at 100 watts right for particular pressure of nitrogen or argon is it correct no right initially nitrogen can be used but then we require oxygen right so 100 watt of power and about 10 millitor of oxygen okay so we can perf we, there is a generation of plasma that will create a surface that is functionalize the surface so that it is ready for bonding next step would be next <laughs> sorry next step would be I have a glass wafer I have a micro heater I have interdigitated electrodes on which I am loading this substrate right I am loading this substrate so what will I have I will have like this something like this correct I will have a feature which is like this because now you see if I if I draw this uh, with let us say um, 0 pattern then you see here where is my pdms my pdms is here and thus i have a channel you can see a channel right you can see this channel and you can see this channel so what i have done is i have sticked pdms onto the glass substrate which is integrated with a micro heater and a interdigital electrodes and separated by a silicon dioxide or an insulator so, once I have this device, once I have this device, what is the use? I cannot operate anything. So, before you before you stick like this, before you go for oxygen plasma, you have to create a hole in the PDMS. You have to create a hole in the PDMS so that you can use for loading or flowing the drugs and loading cancer cells, right? In the shorter channels, in the shorter channels you are loading cancer cells in the longer channels you are flowing drugs but how can you load if you don't have the inlet and outlet so to create inlet and outlet you have to create you have to create uh, holes in pdms you have to create holes in pdms something like this is a hole is a hole 
how can you create a hole by using acupunch by using a uh, uh, biopsy needle you can create a hole in the PDMS alright. If you have this then it is easy to connect the inlet and outlet or to uh, load the drug alright. So, what we have seen how can we have micro heater and how can uh, what is the process flow for micro heater on that there is an insulator on that there are interdigital electrodes over which there are PDMS channels and we are sticking all together to get a microchip. Now, the question is once you develop this microchip how can you use for rapid drug screening right once you once you we, we now know what is the process for fabricating this microchip. So, what is the next step so that we can use this microchip for rapid drug screening. So, we will see this in the next class in the next module of this particular uh, lecture and uh, we will we will uh, see what kind of data we can generate using what kind of drugs right. So, there are different drugs different cells we, we will see the data obtained from uh, melanoma which is skin cancer from prostate cancer cells and from breast cancer cells and we will see two different kind of drugs one is paclitaxel another one is carboplatin right platinum based drugs or texol based drugs. So, when we use platinum based drugs when you use texol based drugs what kind of uh, uh, results what kind of uh, electrical properties uh, we can we can find out uh, uh, depending on the efficacy of the drug. So, we will see in the next module till then you take care I will see you next class bye.